let's get on to the throwback, you guys. This is an oldie, like I said. Um, so here is here is the throwback set, and I'll show it again under the camera. So this is the fence right here that is uh, skew number 1,000 and something. Uh, this is the oldie, and I, I changed it up a little bit to make it a little more useful, and I also added the reverse because I like that versatility of being able to work it into a scene, and sometimes it works better to come in from the right. Sometimes it works better to come in from the left, so I just, I gave you both in here. I just felt like uh, you needed to have that versatility to be able to use it to the right and left, and keep in mind that, you know, you can use uh, just one part of this this set too. So you could put that little tiny fence that's in the background. You can leave that off or stamp that by itself. So uh, again, you know, I'm all about you know me. I'm all about versatility and be able to use be able to use things over and over again. And you know, when it comes to fences, uh, I don't I don't know that you can have too many fences. Like you know, and and also keep in mind that you can use parts of them. So, for example, on the long ones, you can just use, you know, maybe this much of it or this part of it. So, uh, you know, if there's always places to incorporate a little fence into your, um, into your completed project. Now, this one down here, this is also an oldie. I think this is, um, I think the SKU is about 1600 something. And it might be in the 95 catalog. This one was in the 93 catalog. Uh, this one I think is in the 95, 96 area. It's more of a standalone. So when you need that quick project and maybe more of a, um, you know, those masculine cards are really hard to, you know, some, some of those masculine cards that you need to make, they're, it's really hard to find something that works for that. And this is a really, really good one to use. Now up here, you also get the barbed wire. Now in the original, it was part of the stamp, but when you're watercoloring, you know, if that barbed wire was on here, it would be really hard to keep that from bleeding into the original. So I made that separate as an accent. So we're gonna do this project right here. We're gonna put that together <clears throat> and we're gonna use that little barbed wire. I'm gonna show you how that works. Uh, with that set, you also get this little cutie, uh, this little horse. So when you buy that uh, throwback set, you're gonna get this free. Now. You know, if one of you has that original fence from 93 uh, or the other one from 95, you already have it and you order in the next three days and just put in the comments, I own those stamps. Would you send me the freebie? Absolutely. We'll include that into your order. So you will get this free with your stamp set, your throwback set. So this is the little guy that's right here. He's super easy to color. I stamped this just in the brown, the dark brown, and stamped it on my watercolor paper, pulled the color out, and there you go. So this little guy, and you know, I, we've, we've got the horse because, you know, we've got the fence. So there you go. You got a little scene all ready to go. Uh, now we started doing with our throwbacks, we started throwing back our collectible freebies. So this is the one for this month, this cute little elephant. I love this little guy. He is from about 2016 to uh, in the vicinity of 2016 to 2018, been long gone. Uh, but he is back just for three days. So if you are adding to your collection and you know so many of so many of you collect these little guys, uh, he's back one more time so that you can finish your collection. He's available on the website. The SKU is EF0123. And again, I'll show these under the camera so that you can see them up close. So this little guy is available. If you want to see the full collectible uh, guide, the collector's guide, go to artimpressions.com and at the very top, it'll say get inspired in the little, um, you know, in the little tab. This says get inspired. So click on that and you'll see down below the collector's guide and click on that and you'll see all of these. There are so many of them over the years that we have put out as a free stamp. So they came with your order. That's that's why they were promotional. They came with your order, but they were only for a limited time and then we had new ones. So uh, when we found out that so many of you were collecting them, we decided to bring them back once a month, one at a time and give you a chance to finish your collection if you're missing one uh, or two of them. So we'll be bringing one of these back <coughs> every month with our throwback. So let me just uh, see if there are any more uh, comments or anything that you guys want to ask me. Uh, and where is, 
my comments now. And wow, Facebook. I don't see. Okay. Oh, here we go. Just a little delayed. All right, you guys. Okay. I want to tell you one more thing. So tomorrow I'm going to, so tomorrow for watercolor Wednesday, I am going to show you um, a big reveal. So I have three new spring journals coming this, this in the next weeks and I have finished one. And I also want to show you something else really cool that is coming out in the next uh, few weeks also. So it's a big reveal. I'm going to show it to you tomorrow on Watercolor Wednesday. So, you know, be on with me in the morning. Or if you can't watch until later, you'll get to see it later. But uh, I'm going to show you uh, this really cute journal that I put together. And something absolutely so cool that you can use in all of your journals. So uh, we're going to be doing that tomorrow. Uh, at the 10 o'clock Watercolor Wednesday. And of course, I'll have a really fun project for you too. So <clears throat> it'll be a really fun morning. Uh, okay, let me just make sure. Uh, hello, Debbie. She says we love reveals. I do too. I love doing them. They're just so much fun. And I got to tell you guys, I am so jazzed about these new journals coming out. And the thing about the journals too is even if you're not a journaler and even if it's not something that's appealing to you, they make great cards. So every single page in here will inspire you to use it in a card as well. So there's lots of, um, there's lots of tutorials. There's lots of instruction in these. And because I just have so many ideas now, I will have to record some of them. So some of them will be live. Some of them will be partially live and then some of them will be recorded. So, <coughs> excuse me, heads up on that one, you guys. Um, and with that, unless there are any questions and I'll check back on this if you guys have any more questions, but <clears throat> let's get on to our tutorial. I'm gonna flip my camera around and let's get to our tutorial. Okay, and the stressful part is done. So I've got my camera flipped over. And let's see if I can zoom in because no, it just will not let me do that still. So I'm going to just drop this down a little bit so that you guys can see clearly. <clears throat> and here is, okay, let me show you these, uh, these up close again, uh, just to make sure that you can see the SKU numbers. So, okay, here he has on here, Joel has on here originals, J1616, that's this one, and G1029, which is this one. So, and let me show you what I mean by the, um, by the original on that one that has the barbed wire. So here's the original, and it also had this rope on it. It had a lot of extra details. I felt like this was a little bit much here. And then uh, the barbed wire would be really hard to uh, show those fine lines. Uh, if that weren't a, a separate stamp that you could add to it later. So here's the original. It's the same size um, as this one. I just changed it up a little bit, simplified it a little bit more, and then add the, added that barbed wire. So this, this little barbed wire, you could put it anywhere. You don't necessarily have to put it on the fence, fence post. You could, you could put it down here on the ground because the lines are really thin. It's gonna, it's gonna be really versatile as an accent stamp. So um, anything that you do that's kind of rustic and old or country or farm, you can add that or parts of it. Always keep that in mind that these stamps can be used in parts. So maybe you just want this part of it. You don't necessarily need the whole thing. So always keep that in mind when you're doing these. Uh, here is the right and left of these two. And they are going to be really great to add into a full scene. Uh, you know, like I said, remember you can just use parts. So maybe you just ink three panels or four panels, or maybe you would leave this back part off. Um, so they're going to be really versatile. And especially if you have the right and the left. So this is the one that we're going to be doing here. And I, you know, I just, I felt like it was uh, really versatile for other occasions uh, or other seasons. So, you know, I'm always saying, oh, you could just, you could put, make this snowy and you could make it a winter scene. But I thought I would just quickly uh, just make one so that you could kind of see 
what I mean. So how cute is that to just make it wintry? And, you know, I think I used two colors really on this whole thing. Um, I added my white snow and, um, and then the background so that you can see where all of this, uh, you know, all of these little branches and stuff is. And then of course I added the little, the little, um, Rod iron, the rod iron, the little um, barbed wire onto here too. So uh, you can see the difference here. I just, I love when things are versatile like this and you can change out the seasons and make it something different than just what I'm showing you right here. So I really feel like this is a really good one. Uh, you can also make it fall. Fall would be so cute and fall really would be something similar to this, uh, but with the fall colors and maybe just a little less foliage, something like this maybe with just a few leaves on it. So put a little pumpkin in here and uh, it's it's a really nice size too because it, it's pretty open as far as adding things to it. And you know, a little pumpkin sitting up on top of the fence, a little pumpkin down here, maybe some birds up along here. There's a lot of space to add things um, <clears throat> in it because of the size that it is. So. Uh, that is what we're going to do today. We're going to make this and we're just going to need a few things. So in addition to uh, this, oh, you know what? I should just show you the skews of these two also. So this is the one that you're getting here. This one's free. So it's not available for purchase, but it's free with this set. So you'll get this little horse. And then this one is available now. This is the little throwback. EF0123, and that's available on the website right now. All of these things are available right now, you guys. Um, <clears throat> so let me just kind of set this aside here. And, um, oh, I, you know what? I just wanted to show you one more thing on here on this snowy one. Um, this little branch here, do you see how I added the snow to it? I haven't done that yet with the white paint. <clears throat> and so it kind of reminded me that I haven't done that with the white paint. I've done a lot of fir trees. We've made a lot of Christmas trees and added snow to it. But I haven't done anything like, a, you know, a deciduous tree that has lost all its leaves and it's got snow on it. So let me just quickly show you what the project is for tomorrow. So I thought, you know what? I just what I'm going to do. I'm going to add some, you know, bare branches and show you how to add snow to those. And um, I'll go into this in a little more detail tomorrow morning. But, you know, be with me tomorrow and we're going to create this little... Um, cute little snowy scene. It's not Christmas. Christmas is past, but uh, a lot of you still have snow outside your window. Um, so maybe you don't want a snowy scene. Maybe you want some flowers. So that's what we're doing today. But you can also change this out um, to, you know, summer or spring or fall, whatever. So anyway, we're going to do that. I sort of neglected to do that in the past. And uh, that was reminded, reminded me when I did this bare branch. So you guys, uh, lots of information this morning because I haven't seen you guys, so I just have so much to tell you. <laughs> so, <laughs> okay, and Bonnie talked for the first 20 minutes of the throwback today. So anyway, I missed you guys. So I feel like you're right here in my office with me. Uh, okay, so in addition to this stamp, uh, we're also going to need, I, I just picked up these little accent grasses, and you know what, you guys, um, you know that you can use what you have. So if you don't have these specific things, you can definitely use what you have. So I just picked these little accent grasses um, to add to it. And then, of course, I always try to uh, go back to the flowers and the foliage set from the very beginning because there are so many of you that are new and maybe you don't have, you know, all of these stamp sets. Some of you do, and I appreciate that so much. Uh, some of you have been doing this technique for a lot of, a lot of um, many years and you have a lot to choose from, but some of you are new. So I try to go back to these and... Um, <clears throat> I try to go back to these and, um, you know, for sure use some of these from the original set. Um, so, and then we're going to use the branches, some of these, uh, this one right here, uh, maybe. And in this one, I didn't, but, you know, when I looked at it later, I thought, oh, it might be kind of nice to put in, you know, a couple of these little branches. So depending on how much space we have, we may use that one right there or not. Um, <clears throat> there was a question about the size of the fences compared to the Victorian house and barn. Um, is there a way that, uh, Joel, you or Leah, uh, could just maybe, 
you know, answer that question. Uh, put the two of them side by side somehow um, so that people can, I should have, that was a, that's a really, really good question. And it's hard to see that um, in perspective. Let me, you know what, let me just see if I can just quickly answer that actually. Maybe I have that right here. Um, <clears throat> perspective is really important. So here we go. Let me look. Okay, here is the fence. So this one is bigger. Here is the fence right here. Um, let me hold it up to the top so that you can see it. See the difference here? This one, this one is almost as big as these two panels right here. That's what I mean by um, it's a really nice size as a standalone. You know, these are uh, these are meant to be incorporated into scenes, and um, but this is kind of a standalone, sort of like our foundations, where you can uh, just you can do everything you know with everything that's in it, but you can also add you know a pumpkin or something. There's plenty of space for that. <clears throat> so that's a really good question. Uh, okay, so back on track here. Uh, I've already pre-stamped this, so it's a very simple scene. It's all one stamp. The rocks and everything are included in it, so I just inked it in the two colors. So the dark blue first, and then uh, the dark brown. So the dark blue 565, and the dark brown 947. So those two, I just inked it in those two, and now we're going to pull the color out of the line. So that's always the first step. This is a great project too for beginners. So if you are new to this technique, this is a great one to start with. It's really, really simple, really simple. And there are just, there are plenty of lines uh, in here to pull out the color. And so that's what I'm doing. I'm just dragging the color out to get um, some of this texture in here. Now I, um, I didn't stamp this one off because I wanna make this, um, this fence a little more rustic looking, so I want a little more color. So I didn't, I didn't stamp it off this time. And then I'm just pulling this color out from this little rusty bucket here. Uh, this is a really tiny little handle, so we don't have to. Um, we don't want to get too, don't want to get too much color on that. And I'm just coming underneath uh, these lines. So you can see if, you, if you're coming underneath the line, it's gonna bring this section up. And when you have something like this, it's, that looks a little bit more like a washboard, um, you want that to look like these little um, ridges are kind of coming forward. So this line here, we're kind of going right over the top of that. And then these here, this one is on the top here, and this one is underneath. And that's gonna bring these ridges up and forward. And with rocks, uh, you always want to show the darkest color at the base of the rock. You wanna be able to see that highlight that's up here. So that dark color, the darkest color is going to be down here. And this is just kind of the beginning stages of this little project. And on this one, you know, on the original, um, I had the bucket closed. So you can see on here, see how close this bucket is? It's, it's hard to get something in here, you know, when you've got this back ridge. So in order to make this easier, I usually leave the back side off. You can always draw it back in. So if, for example, you're putting in some dead, you know, dried branches or, you know, you really want to make this like it's kind of in a deserty area, so you don't have a lot of foliage, you just want to draw this line back in. Let me do it with a pencil so I can show you what I mean. So you can just draw this back in just like this and then just have a few branches over here. But it's better to um, start with that uh, open. It's much easier to draw that line back in than it is to deal with that, that heavy line. And this is a, this is a really heavy line back here. But when I made this, it was for a totally different purpose. It wasn't really for watercolor, but, um, it works great for watercolor now. Okay. So let's continue on here. And now that we've pulled the color out of the lines, uh, I'm going to add a little more color to it. So I'm gonna just take my, um, my warm brown, my 947, and just put a little bit of this on my palette. Okay, here's my New Year's resolution, you guys. 947, I'm gonna try. You know what, you might have to remind me 
um, a few times, but I'm going to try to remember to do this. Uh, this is 969. And I'm gonna kind of just mix these two together. You know, I can get a different color variation. When you're doing something like rustic like this, you want to have uh, different colors in it. You know, the, the wood is kind of weathered and you just kind of want to apply it just a little bit like this so you, you can add more color to it. We're just going to start out by adding a little bit of this and then we'll come back and do a little bit more. This is that dark brown. Like this. And then we can just kind of build on this. I'm going to take my twin tone now, my fine tip. This is my twin tone. And I'm going to darken these little areas. See this little um, this little hole here where the, the wood is kind of, you know, rotten or the little post kind of sits inside of here? We can make that really dark. And this here where the post is broken off, this can also be really dark in here. And these little lines kind of at the at the top, see how this one has kind of a, a little chunk kind of taken out of it? Leave a little space there and just kind of bring this down. And you can add a lot more um, texture into this old post by doing stuff like that. Maybe you want to create another little hole in here, something like that. And don't, you know, don't be afraid to try stuff like this. You're not that far into your project that if you really hate it, you can just go back and just, you know, start all over again. This little opening here, you know, it's going to be dark. And, you know, I'm always just putting just tiny little areas of dark uh, color in. Okay, so let's let's sit with that for a little bit and let's do our um, our vines and our florals in here. So I'm going to start out with my uh, my little flowers from uh, the original flower set, set one, and I'm going to use my 526. And I'm just going to ink these and just kind of stamp them in the bucket. And then maybe I'll just put some kind of out here as well. And you can, you can put as much of this in here, you know, as you want. And maybe you want to make it a little more rustic. You don't have to put blooms in at all. You could just fill it with, you know, some uh, little branches and maybe a few little leaves on it and kind of make it your own. And then I'm just going to add a little water to it so I can kind of blend this out. And I'm, I'm going to just take a little bit of this, you know, from the fence and just pull it out to the background also. It's going to give us a little more dimension here. A little more of a background um, effect. Okay, so now let's add our vine. And you can use any vine. Uh, it doesn't have to be this one. Uh, I'm going to just, you know what, I think I will... Um, just cover this post so that I can grow the vine from the background uh, behind. So I'm just, I just put a little piece of post-it tape on here and I'm just gonna grow this vine. I'm using my green 177. And I'm just going, going to uh, just kind of grow it out. Just like this. And then maybe I'll just hang one down here as well. Now it kind of looks like that little vine is kind of tucked underneath here. And then of course we're gonna add our water to it. And you can, you know, it's okay to blend that green into the blue a little bit. Totally fine. Okay, so now let's go on to the bottom here. And I've got a little bit of this green still on my brush. So I'm just going to take a little bit of this and just kind of drag this over. Pull a little of this, of this color from the stones. 
And then we want to um, add a little bit more color to the bucket. So I'm going to put my 565 on here. And add a little of this dark blue to the bucket. Stay in, in each section. So you want to be sure to not cross. Don't cross these little ridges here. Don't cross them with your color. So you want to stay in each section, even if they're small. And then remember, you know, when you're doing something that has a contour like this, the darker color is going to be on the side and the lighter color is going to be in the middle. And that's what makes it look like it's three dimensional. It just will. And I can add a little bit of this brown to it too, uh, just to kind of make it look a little more rustic. Just a little bit kind of here and there. And, you know, add some of this color to the rocks too. So, you know, some of this brown, we can kind of blend it with the blue a little bit. We can add some of this to the rocks. You want to be sure to kind of keep that highlight um, on the top. But rocks have a lot of colors in them. And so the more colors that you can add, be brave, uh, the more realistic your little rocks are going to be. And I'm going to I'm going to add some of this, you know, gray kind of gray color to my fence too because I feel like it's kind of out in the weather and probably, you know, weathered. So, I'm going to just add some of this gray. And the gray is just a mix. This is what we get when we mix this dark brown, the 969 565. We get a gray, a really nice gray. And so that's what we've got here on the palette too. Just, you know, mix a little bit and different amounts. So, you know, obviously more blue is going to give it more of a blue tone and more brown. But that's what mixes it up and gives you um, a more variation of color. Don't forget about this little piece back here. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and add some sky in now. And that's just my dark blue. And you know, if you want a little grayer sky, you can add some of that brown in it too. And you know, I always say, don't overdo the sky. Just, you know, brush on a little bit and let it be. That's the easiest way. Okay, so now I'm going to just add, I'm going to use my tiny little brush here. <clears throat> and I'm going to add a little blue underneath this handle. So that, you can see that really lifts up uh, this handle and creates that little shadow. Under here we're gonna have more of a shadow under here under here under here this little post is kind of in the background back behind this post okay so now let's add our um, our little vines and flowers in here so I'm just going to kind of grow up this, this little vine, just, just put it up along here. Maybe put another one in here. Add some water. And, you know, blend in a little bit of that uh, brown from the post that will change up your color a little too so that it's not all the same you don't want everything you know to be the same exact color be able to mix in 
Um, okay, so let's add this little guy. I haven't used this in a long time, so I pulled it out because I just love it. And I, it just, you know, i got to be reminded to pull out some of these things. <clears throat> And this one, this can go anywhere because it's kind of an accent. It's kind of a little accent stamp. And two colors. So I'm adding, I'm mixing two colors onto here. Put a few in there and maybe uh, just a couple just in here. And you don't have to do anything with these little stems. You know, don't do anything with the stems. Just leave them. When it's a little accent stamp like this, if you try to add water to these stems, they just get too thick. So let's add on, um, let's add in our grasses. Let's do that. So the little accent grass here. And just, you know, a few. Maybe just a couple in here. Got a couple. These also can be stamped over the tops of things, which make them uh, really, really versatile. Let's just put a couple in here. These don't also don't need a lot of water. Just a tiny little bit will do the trick. Okay, so let's add um, let's add the the little um, barbed wire. And I've got it on my block, so I'm going to use my positioner to make sure that I get it in the right place. Whoops. So I'm going to place my little acrylic shield on here. For those of you who've never used a positioner, um, it's a little T-square. It comes with this little shield. And you're going to place it in the corner. And then you're going to ink your stamp. And I'm going to ink this with the brown, so the dark brown. And um, the dark, the black. So the N N25 or N15, doesn't matter, just a dark gray or a dark black. And then I'm going to stamp this. I'm going to hold this inside and stamp this right into the corner. And now I can see exactly where this uh, little barbed wire is going. And I think that's probably really good um, right there. I think that's good. So now I can remove that shield, and now when I stamp this in the corner, it's going to be right in the exact same place. And I'm just going to add a little more uh, black to this to make sure that it's really dark. And there we go. And you could also just, you know, to kind of lift this off the fence, Take your tiny little, um, get enough water on here. Take your tiny little brush and just put a little um, shadow underneath here. And that will kind of lift it up off of, off of the fence. Okay, I need to just add a little more dark brown. In here and down as we go, and maybe in here. Really darken under here like that. Inside this bucket, we can see a little bit of that. And I'm gonna just really darken this handle. as it goes around. Like so. And then, you know, I gotta add a little white to it. So I gotta get out my white paint and just put a little white in it. And I, look how much I use this, you guys. I use this so much. I'm just gonna put a few little white and I'm using my tiny little brush Just put some little white blooms in here. And maybe 
you just a few out here. And you can also kind of drag this across your uh, fence to make it just a little bit more rustic. It gives it a little more texture. Where it really kind of looks like it's weathered. Okay, and we are finished with this little project. One thing left to do, and you know, I've got to get into the habit of signing 2023, you guys. Um, so I've been practicing. So initials, always initials and the date, because it's amazing how you progress. I look back at some of mine, you know, even from four or five years ago, and I can see that my style has changed a ton. 2023. And don't forget the snowy one, you guys. You can see how easy it is to do a snowy one here. Same, same. And actually, I used the same little um, vine here uh, just to add a little bit to it. And you know what? I never use the branches. Let's just put them in really quick since I said I was going to. Um, let's just put this in. Let's put this in maybe right here and maybe right here. Okay, now it's really done. All right, <laughs> if you would like to have this, please say so in the comments and uh, Leah will pick a winner like she always does. And I'm going to flip my camera back around so I can say hello and goodbye to all of you again. Um, <clears throat> let me show you the, the um, Bring back the branch from the haunted house. Yes. Yes, I will. Tony, that was a good question. Um, okay, let me show you the throwback again. It is this set. It's the right and left of the fence line up above. It's the little barbed wire and that really fun little um, fence post that we just did in this tutorial. So this is number 5740 available right now with that you get this cute little horse, this one right here. Uh, it is free with your stamp set. So if you get the throwback, you're gonna get that free in your order. And then the collectible, collectible the little freebie collectibles, the little elephant this month. And uh, she is EF0123. So this little guy available on the website, if you would like to add to your collection or finish up your collection, you can certainly do that. Um, be with me tomorrow morning, you guys, big reveal. I, I don't know if I can stand it till tomorrow morning, but I am so excited to show you guys what is going to be new or a sneak peek as to what's coming out uh, in the next few weeks. Um, you guys, I hope you're as excited about it as I am. Can you tell? Uh, I will be looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow morning, 10 o'clock Pacific time is Watercolor Wednesday. And um, I just thank you all for being here with me um, <clears throat> back again. I'm looking forward to 2023. I have so many ideas in my head uh, that I can't wait to show you. And it's a good, it'll be a fun time to watercolor together. We're always learning. I'm learning and you guys are learning. Okay, is there a question? Um, I can't read that. We'll go through, I'll go through the comments and uh, we'll check the questions. Leah's on and Joel are on, is on. So those guys can go through and answer questions. Sorry, I couldn't see that with my glasses. Um, but we will... <laughs> We'll get to your questions for sure. Uh, be sure to leave them on there. And if you would like to have this sample from today, you certainly may. You can be entered into the drawing to win it. So I will see you all tomorrow. Thank you so much for being on with me. And um, woohoo, 2023, here we go. Thanks so much. See you tomorrow.